Hey guys, welcome to the Big Talk with Austin. This is going to be a big episode. I'm so excited for you guys to listen. Um, if you guys are on our Spotify or watch it from our YouTube channel, the Review Show, which both of you guys should go check out. Um, if you guys are from the Review Show, go check out my Spotify. Um, if you guys are from Spotify, um, go check out my Review Show, uh, the Review Show on YouTube. Um, it, but most of all, I'm more excited for this podcast episode. We have a lot to talk about. I'm bringing my best friend Evan on for this one. Uh, we're going to be talking about Star Wars, the um, the Snyder Cut f- uh, for the Justice League, um, um, you know, Predator and like um, and like John Wick and all that type of stuff. It's going to be awesome. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoy. Um, let's get right into it. Thing I want to talk about is the Mandalorian season two cast announcement so they came out dave uh, dave floney is now part of the mandalorian at least for those episodes that is being introduced uh, for his characters so like ahsoka sabim and some other characters from the clone wars and rebels um and they're only supposed to be in for one episode which is i guess fine i was hoping that they weren't even going to be in here uh in the mandalorian and so having them in one episode is now even more kind of frustrating. It's like, why even have them at all? Because it's supposed to be a setup for an our um, TV show uh-huh. um, that is supposed to be animated from what I know. So what's the point of bringing their live action characters? I mean, it's like no point. Like might as well use the actual actors um, that did the voice acting if they're not going to do that much because they've been casted two completely different people and the people that were cast as the voice actors could pull off the live action characters but i don't know so what do you think about this uh i mean i the only reason why i really enjoyed the mandalorian was because of how um detached it felt from the skywalker saga and how you still have these pieces of like the Siege of Mandalore and the Mandalorians and all that lore. But I really enjoyed the Mandalorian because it felt so separate, but yet so Star Wars. But now they're trying to implement the these characters that we have seen before. And they're trying to convert it from an like an animated spectrum, which it never it never turns out good. Yeah. I mean, like, it's, I like the Mandalorian because of it being, like, a old Western in some sort of way. It was, like, old West cowboy type of style. Yeah. And and so, I just, I really liked it that we never saw any lightsabers. It was, like, the first show, like, it tried to do a solo, where Solo never actually had a lightsaber, but, you know, it did better than Solo. Um which they came out and announced that people want, oh, I hope this is just a lie rumor, but people have been saying they, we want a solo too, just to see Darth Maul, but I, I don't want, <laughs> don't want solo too, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I really liked the Mandalorian for what it was and just to have the characters set up in our season makes no sense to me when their seasons are already set up or you're or you already have stuff set up for better stuff but now you can't do that stuff because you came out and said that um like they survived throughout the whole whole entire um rebel battles like because now if we ever see ahsoka fight darth maul which i really want to see them uh, go against each other again um we already know Ahsoka's going to survive. And we already know that Maul's going to survive because we already know how Maul dies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like, I don't know. It's 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 really dumb. I, I mean, I just hope hopefully they can pull something off because now the only way I saw Ahsoka dying is she died to the hands of Anakin Darth Vader. I think that would have been emotional if we if she died to him. Because like mm-hmm. having having your own master just kill you is kind of like heartbreaking in some sort of way. Yeah. And, but now I can't even see her dying after all of this because she is dead, according to the Rise of Skywalker. You hear her voice, and so I mean, like she has to die. She has to die. 
But the thing is, who's she going to die to? She can't die to a stormtrooper. She can't die to a First Order trooper. Who's she going to die to? There's no one out there to kill her. She's probably going to die of old age. Yeah, like, so who who's going to kill her? Luke Skywalker? I don't think so. That's the only last Jedi. Oh, God. What is the last Jedi? All right, whatever. Anyway, yeah, I don't. I'm okay with them being in the um, Mandalorian. The only problem I have is that why would Disney? They keep they like to keep a lot of stuff secret about these big franchises and yes. movies. Well, which may, but now which, already. What has me worried is them announcing them already, meaning they had no idea what they're going to do for this season. The, yeah. It, they're trying to get people to come back because they think the season's going to suck. Um, I think it could have been really good if they went with like a Boba Fett. Oh, kind of they, 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 no, they announced that Boba Fett will be in the se- even the Mandalorian. Wait, really? Yeah, and recasted um, for the guy that played the clones. Oh, yeah. So, I'm kind of happy about that. Oh well, yeah, that's a good casting choice, and I'm kind of kind of interesting where they're gonna go with that. But at the same time, I think they also announced that he's just only in there for one episode to get his own season. Yeah. So, so it feels like season two is just a big setup for some some spinoffs, and not actually about the Mandalorian. But. I don't know. It's that's fine. If we don't get to see Ahsoka use her lightsabers, then that's fine. Because I think the only thing we should ever see that's related to it, lightsaber is Luke or um, or the black saber that we got to saw, see at the end of the last season. Yeah. And oh, so. Hmm. And so I mean. I don't mind seeing a young Luke because um, the guy that plays Bucky in the Winter of uh, the Winter Soldier, um, he looks exactly yeah. like Mark Hamill. Oh, oh, yeah. So they can they easily can do Luke, easily do some Luke stuff, but I don't know. I'm still looking forward to the second season. Um, it's coming out October, I believe. Because they're already done with production and all that. Which um, also leads me to the next point. Lego Star Wars, um, the Skywalker Saga, actually has a release date now. And I believe it is October. Let's see here. They need to figure out if it's online co-op. Yeah, they actually did confirm that. Did they? That's going to be That's going to be cool. Okay, it comes out October 20th, 2020. Okay. And they confirmed that they're remastering all the new episodes, all the new levels, and there's actually around 500 playable characters, which is insane. That's more That's more than uh, their actual other games. Yeah, so they've actually been working on this, like, I think ever since the Force Awakens LEGO game came out, and they said, you know what, instead of making two more Lego games that are just mediocre. They wanted to just bring everything together in like so, the final Lego Star Wars game. So are they going to put the Force Awakens game, like just copy and paste it into that game? Or is it going to no, be different? They redesigned all the levels. They redesigned, like, okay, that's good. Yeah. Right, that's good to hear. I mean, like, I'm excited for that game. I was just worried about they were going to copy and paste. So are they going to keep it are they going to keep like one eps like so if you go to one episode you're able to walk into one episode it'd be a parter for parter or would it be what's like how's that going to work uh so you you can actually start in any movie that you want to okay so it's like it's like the Jurassic Park Lego game yeah. all right well, that sounds cool but, i mean most people are just going to start in phantom menace but i just can't wait gonna i don't think they're gonna be in it i really hope they do yeah i mean i'm kind of curious if they're gonna bring in some voice actors from the original game i don't even know if well lego games don't really have voice acting that much well the older ones didn't but 
Now they do. I, I don't know how I feel about it, but I think it'll be okay. And I'm really excited for this game just because they put so much effort into it. Are they adding the Clone Wars? Or... Uh, no, it's just the Skywalker okay. trilogies, episodes one through nine. All right. Well, that, that's something to look forward to, especially uh, with another big announcement. Um, Taiwiki, I don't, I don't know how to say his name, but the director from Thor Ragnarok is making a Star Wars movie, and mm-hmm. it's rumored to be Episode Ten, or or another rumor is supposed to be taking place um, between um, A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, and so I mean like. I, I like that director. I like what he did with the Thor f- film, and I can't wait to see what he does with Thor 4, uh, Thor uh, Love of Thunder. Um, but, you know, have – so he I, – I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the time placement. I would like to see more of early Order 66. I just like that part of of the air order 66 I, yeah. we don't see a whole lot of order 66 i think we need more of it even like old republic that's even a rumor that he might do so i don't know what do you think is gonna uh i mean uh i think easily Clone Wars is my favorite star wars era but i feel like we already have enough content in the area it's not, I'm not saying that I don't want more. I think it's good to focus on the other trilogies, yeah, not yeah. so much the sequels. But the Clone Wars got to the point it. where you can't really add a whole lot unless you mess up a little bit of the timeline. So, But there's still a lot of battles that we haven't seen in the Clone Wars. Um, even, like, even, like, we see, you know, I don't know. I would, I would like to see some Old Republic, something new. Something that's not really connected to the Skywalker saga. Even may- maybe see a prequel to Palpatine, like him killing Plagueis and like all that, and like seeing him and like yeah, it would be kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I I would like to see finally see a dark Star Wars movie for once. I mean, the darkest movies that. And Star Wars is Revenge of the Sith and Empire Strikes Back. I want something similar to those, and some, and not this kid-friendly crap that we've been getting recently, like, um, like in the Clone Wars season seven. Yeah, honestly, I mean, Clone Wars was a good, great finale that I don't think we need anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Mandalorian is different. A different page, but I think these short movies. I mean, you have one really good one and one really mediocre that we've seen so far. So, Rogue One that answered a really big question of how do they get the Death Star plans in a new yeah. hope. I mean, but, I, I love that movie, but there's still issues with the movie, like its pacing is a little bit all over the place, but you know. That's just how Star Wars is. You're you're supposed to love it or you're supposed to hate it, and like, yeah. it's it's not what the point of Star Wars is. It's supposed to be a mixed bag, which I that's and you're supposed to relate to every character, even though they're from a galaxy far far away. But you know, Star Wars has come a long way. Hopefully, this new generation takes Star Wars in a new direction, or or um, Dune, that's supposed to be quoted the next Star Wars, um, which is interesting because it's cast from Star- the Star Wars sequels, so that's kind of funny. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm fine with all the Star Wars content that we have. I just want more uh, Star Wars games, like Fallen Order and Battlefront. Oh, yeah. Let's get too fun. <laughs> Um, Battlefront's coming free on PlayStation Plus, so. Ooh. Can't wait to uh, get my hands on that crappy game. Um, all right, so I guess coming back to Star Wars, um, so these Ahsoka and Sabine seasons, what do you think is going to, what do you think the first season 
will be about? I honestly have no clue. I don't even know how they're going to cross paths. I think maybe because you'd think that Mandal- the Mandalorian would maybe go back to Mandalore, but with Baby Yoda, it's just kind of hard to tell because in the end, it seemed like he was going to go find Baby Yoda's home. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Maybe things change, and the dark saber's gonna have something to do with it. But yeah. well, with the dark saber, I mean, I think the Mandalorians are basically dead. Like you, like a lot of them, like are probably dead. If he, if the Imperial, you know, Lieutenant has a death saber or the black saber, whatever you want to call it. They're mostly gone, so I kind of want to see how he got it. That's more... Yeah. Like, well, I, I think he got it from the Great Purge, or another Imperial officer got it from the Great Purge, mm-hmm. because before that, I think well, Maul had had it. Yeah, Maul had it, but um, in Rebels, it didn't show him having it, so kind of curious where it was. Well, I think that's after the Siege of Mandalore. And then, because right after the Siege of Mandalore, um, and then Order 66 happens, literally, I think, like, maybe a year later, the Empire invades Mandalore. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the Great Purge, where they kill all the Mandalorians. Yeah, I mean, something, it's kind of... I don't know. Well, in a way, we see a lot more um, questions being answered and um, just be just rising up because we see the Mandalorian has so much to do with the men um, with Mandalore, and I would be surprised if we don't even see him going back there. Yeah, just because he, he, it was his original family. So if they're gonna go deep into the Mandalorian. They they have to go back to Mandalore. Because I think at this time, he he was there at the beginning of Order 66. He had to be there. Uh-huh. So, because it, I mean, it just matches the time and all that. Because at this time, and the, the Mandalorian, he's probably 40. Yeah. And, and so... Yeah, um, the next big topic um, is the DC supercut of the Justice League, um, the Snyder Cut. It's been going all around. It's supposed to be coming out on um, HBO Max, HBO's um, newest streaming service. Yeah, it actually dropped, I think, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it came out with a lot of stuff. It came out with the friend. It came out with Friends and um, what's all it? the DC movies except. Yeah. Justice League theatrical version, which only makes you um, think. I never really saw oh, they it. Already... I, yeah, I never really saw Justice League. I saw it on TV there and then, but I didn't really watch it because, okay. I mean, I sat there and watched it for like 10 minutes. Like, at, literally at the beginning, I was like, what, what is this? <laughs> I'm like, this is, this is something else. <laughs> so I just quit. Yeah. I quit watching it. I was like, oh, no. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I like Justice. I, I like Snyder, but yeah. uh, I like his. My favorite movie from him in the DCU is probably Man of Steel. That's the darkest one. Well, not the darkest one, but it, it took yeah. Superman in a new direction that I never thought of. And but then they. But then he came and ruined it in Batman v Superman, which it, it really isn't Batman v Superman. It's Batman works with yeah. Superman. Um, so, yeah. But then... Well, have you seen... You saw the extended version, though, right? Yeah, yeah. it was even more messy. Oh, my gosh. No, it's not. <laughs> yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes. And how does the Flash know who Batman is? How, what's that? What is all that about? Flash. It's Flashpoint Paradox. He literally knows who everyone is. He can go did back you, and go between dimensions. Uh, I guess that's true. Um, did you hear about the actor getting um, get in a bar fight? That that played the Flash and the uh, the movie Flash, not the TV show Flash. Oh, 
I can't remember the actor's name, but he's in the Harry Potters. But yeah, he yeah. So a lot of stuff is going on with the Flash. I'm kind of curious if they will bring back that actor to play him in the Justice League suit Snyder cut. <laughs> but you know, I I mean, I'm looking forward to the Snyder cut. I mean, because he said that he never saw the Justice League that was released in theaters. And that he said only one third or one fourth of his ideas was used in that movie. So, kind of curious what he's going to do. Well, yeah. And honestly, I saw Justice League. um, And then the theatrical version of that as well as Batman vs. Superman with the theatrical of that. They feel like really similar movies where it's trying to do too much at the same time, but really seeing the extended version, you say they implement a lot more things, but it also slows down. And some of the scenes with Superman that is cut out, you really understand his character more on the side of his argument, whereas he's not just some alien that's coming. And I don't know. I just think that um, the extended version of um, BBS just is going to foreshadow how good the Snyder Cut is actually going to be. And it's actually going to be around, I think, four hours long, which is just crazy in a movie. Oh, yeah. Or, I mean, or there, no, I think six hours. Oh, six hours. I think oh. so. So, you know, uh, one, of the, one movies did this in the past. I can't remember what. The name of it but they did like little episodes so like each at like one episode was like an hour so maybe they would do that and mm-hmm. release them on hulu not hulu um hbo max but i mean even they're even bringing back all of the original cast members they're bringing back um uh ben affleck to play batman they're bringing back um um uh, What's this? I can't remember the actor's name for Superman. Um, oh, it's uh, Henry Cavill. That's right. And they're bringing, and they're just bringing, and they're, I mean, like, they're bringing everyone back. But, you know, the thing is, is this going to be their last time playing these actual roles? Because at, when the Batman comes out, it's getting all restarted once again. I mean, yeah. Well, I don't know. Depending on how well the Snyder Cut does. It just okay. If so, it does really well and if it's like great, then um, there might be a second round of these characters that we see. But if it's just another flop, then we okay. might not see it ever, like this ever again. Let's say if it does well, are they going to just cancel all these future movies that are supposed to be coming out? Like they're not going to do that. So now, are we just going to have two different? Time, like two different universes, two different timelines, and sooner or later they come together. Well, I mean, that's what makes DC so like complex. It's so much more complex than Marvel is. Mm-hmm. Well, well, Marvel hasn't really dived into any of the multiverse yet. I mean, yeah, but have you seen any of like the animated movies, the animated DC movies? Because um, I, I've seen that, a few. It goes. Um, into depth about like Flash's um, Flashpoint paradox mm-hmm. and how when he goes back to save his mom, he creates all these different timelines, and yeah. it's basically like endless combinations of how these heroes end up. Mm-hmm. And you can have on one side like the Batman that we're gonna see in twenty twenty one, or Ben Affleck's Batman. There's just um infinite um interpretations that you can make of it i it's just some people like batman a certain way yeah but and like that's the like, for an audience has yeah. two different timelines it's not gonna work out very well yeah they're gonna they're well they're gonna make mo- money either way but i think they're gonna lose more money if they continue on with because if if the snyder cut does well the thing is, I don't think they're going to continue on with Snyder's, tri- like, whatever he wants to do. Because yeah. of what you said, there, there's going to be two different fan base. People, there's going to be people that like the Batman, 
the that's supposed to be like a detective type of movie, which I'm kind of looking forward to. People are saying that no, I want a Batman that like you know is being a badass and making destruction. But you know we can have that like at the end of the movie. But I do want to see Batman being a detective. That's why I did like from the TV shows, um, the animated TV yeah. shows, is just seeing Batman just being smart and. De- like being a detective so i kind of want to see yeah. that mm-hmm. and i get what people are saying but yeah we we do see that in um in batman versus superman as well as a little, little. bit of justice League. but um batman um well you you do see it in batman versus superman because yeah. in um he he finds out where the kryptonite is, and then he makes all these kryptonite weapons, as well as tracking down. Um, I forget what scene it is, but it's a party scene with Lex Luthor and stuff. Yeah. But. I mean, like, yeah, we get we we've seen a little of Batman do de- uh, detective work in the past, but just seeing just like. I want to see like a different side of Batman. We saw we get to we get to see his, the dark side of Batman. We get to see the Chris Christopher Bale's side of Batman, where he doesn't kill. But this bat, but I want to see more killing. I want to see more of dark Batman. I want to see more Batman that kills, because like you know, I want something different, and that's why I expect out of these DCU movies. I want to be different. I want to be separate from the MCU, but they're trying to be both. They're trying to be their own thing, but they're also trying to be the MCU. It just doesn't work that way. You have to pick one, and hopefully that one stakes. If it doesn't, then you got to try something else. But. I mean, well, I mean, we did kind of see that Batman that does kill because the warehouse scene in Batman vs Superman, yeah, he literally wipes out. Yeah, that was a cool scene, but that was only one scene. I want more. Are you kidding me? That warehouse scene in extended version, that's why it's rated R because it's just so intense. I would love, I would love a DCU rated R movie. That's why I like the Joker. Because it's so different, even though it's never going to be connected to anything. None of these movies are going to be connected to anything. But at least the Joker took a risk and tried something new. And that's why well, that's why I like it all better than any of the other DC, DCU movies that have came out. Well, the PBS extended version was rated on because of the violence. I, I guess so, yeah. It, it was. I mean, I, I whatever. I mean, I don't, I don't prefer Batman versus Superman. If you're gonna want, if you want Batman, to go watch um, Chris, uh, Christopher Bale's Batman, or your, I don't know. If you want, if, if you want the best Batman, go look at the go go to the animated series with uh, mean, Kevin Conroy. That's the best Batman we have ever gotten. I mean, yeah, wasn't jo- wasn't Mark Hamill's Joker in that one? Yeah, Mark Hamill's Joker, and Kevin Conroy is also voice- voices a lot of the Batman's in the DC yeah. um, animated movies, and those animated movies are actually really good. Yeah, I mean, superhero animated movies are long gone; <laughs> they're not coming back, at least for a while. They're they're actually really good though, and. <laughs> A lot of them are rated R just because of how violent they are. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I mean, they don't have you... to. They don't have to be bloody to be rated R, and that's what movies get wrong these days. They have to be bloody to be rated R. It's, so I don't know. I don't know. I want. I want more like you know serious movies, and so, I want. I want. I want to see a serious side of superhero movies like um, *Brightburn*. It's not really a superhero movie, but it took the aspect, what if Superman was evil? And so I really liked that movie, and even though it didn't really do well, but I liked it for what it was. Do you know what Brightburn is? Yeah, I saw the trailer, but I didn't have time to see it. Okay. should check it out. Maybe. Uh, um, Just like you should check out the animated movies. I'll, I mean, I've watched some of them. I haven't watched a lot of them. Um, they're they're very interesting. What's in my 
Um, so I guess the next thing to talk about is uh, was on the, what's on the list. Um, about government. HBO service dropped. HBO Max. Yeah, there's not on- there's not a lot of stuff on it besides. I, well, I guess Game of Thrones is on it, but who's going to be watching that? <laughs> Uh, a lot of people are going to be watching that. Game of Except for season eight. They're going to be like, oh, wait. I don't know. Yeah, you've got Big Bang, Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty? Um, I thought Rick and Morty was on Hulu. Westworld, um, Teen Titans, Adventure Time. Teen Titans? Yeah. yeah. So a lot of stuff left Hulu then. Then you've got Wonder Woman, Joker. Aquaman, Suicide Squad, It Chapter 2, the full season, or no, the, the movie of Down Abbey, um, Batman vs. Superman. I don't know if it's the extended version. I have the extended it's version in my closet, so I don't know. But and, yeah. Oh, it's a really good movie. Then you've got. Oh gosh, Dark Phoenix. <laughs> I mean that. You, <laughs> yeah, that that review didn't go too well. I might have got myself demonetized on that one. Um, oh, Castaway Doctor Two. Castaway is such a good movie. Castaway. Castaway with Tom Hanks. Yeah, oh, I have. I don't even have. I also have that one. I, I freaking like. I love movies like that. I will. I. I don't know. I want I I want movies like that, but you know now these days people are too afraid to do that. It just has to be big action. Yeah, and I think the biggest one is definitely Game of Thrones. <laughs> Susan, are you? Um, yeah, I don't know who who. I mean, I think HBO is a little bit. What was that? Friends. Is- Easily, if not Game of Thrones, Friends is easily the best on HBO Max, which is definitely going to make it all the popular. Yeah. HBO I mean, Max might be more popular than Disney Plus or Netflix. Nah, ne- nothing's going to beat Netflix. Disney Plus, maybe, definitely. Um, I don't know. It, def- it's just Marvel, and no one def- really watches that anymore. Yeah. Marvel I mean, and- Mar- well, no, I think Netflix is going to keep the Marvel st- a little bit of the Marvel stuff because some of that they're not going to put on Disney Plus. They're not. Uh, they're not going to keep that on Disney Plus because you know, yeah, uh, the Punisher is way too dark for Disney Plus. Um, like Punisher's it, on there. Huh. Uh huh. Um, like I don't know what else is on Netflix that they do for Marvel. And to be honest, Netflix is kind of dry now, just because all the title, all these streaming well, services are taking back. Yeah, thing. but they're trying to spread out to other countries. Like you know, they're doing a lot of movies in India now because they're trying to expand than the U.S. Disney and who and Hulu, HBO, they're just focusing on the U.S. Netflix is trying to focus everywhere. So, I don't know. Like, um, have you we saw? Have- on here, which is good. Avatar the Airbender. The last Airbender. That that's a good show. I was watching yeah. it. And then, uh, and there's Spider-Man in the Spider-Verse. As well as All American. All American's so good. <laughs> um, did you watch um the new release of The Love Birds? I watched it yesterday. The what? The Love Birds. Uh, um they it's a comedy it's all right the story you could care less about but it's funny i don't really watch anything on netflix yeah. besides office art to rec and all of our <laughs> um oh well i guess speaking of tv shows um john wick he's supposed to get his own tv show um it was supposed to be what? Dr- oh. for, Production was supposed to start this year, but with the coronavirus, it's been pushed back until next year. Um, so I'm thinking, would you, would you think Connor, uh, Connor Reeves would star in that show? 
or would he just let some young actor because it's supposed to take place before the first John Wick. Oh yeah, it'll definitely be Keanu Reeves playing John Wick. Definitely, one hundred percent. There's no way Keanu Reeves would ever. But is he? But is he? I think. Before he gets old. Yeah, I, but I think he's a little too busy to do a TV show. He's, is he? What's he doing it, right now? He just finished voicing a movie. Um, isn't he gonna be in a Marvel movie? Yeah, he's supposed to be casted as a villain or something, or no, not as a villain, but he's supposed to be in a future Marvel movie coming up. Um, and he's working on John Wick 4. He's working on um, The John Matrix. And he's working on The Matrix 4. So he has, he has a lot of big stuff coming up. I don't know if you have the time to do a TV show. The Matrix 4 is coming out? Mm-hmm. Oh, Which is kind of weird because he died in Matrix 3. Hey, don't spoil it. I mean, um, he had cancer in the Matrix 3 and died. I mean, he survived. All right, well, I mean, that about wraps up this, uh, this episode, but... There's one more thing we got to talk about. Predator Hunting Grounds added in Arnold into the oh, game. Did? Yeah. Oh, I saw that game. I saw the game play and I saw that it looked like a pretty fun game to play, but I just didn't feel it's, like I had enough content. Yeah, I I have the game. I played I played a lot of the game because I have nothing else to play apparently. Oh. Um I'm already like at least level 40. Um and I bought Arnold and hey. And he is he is amazing, but you can't really do a lot to customize him. I really and I really don't even feel like customizing him because like the original design of him looks amazing than any of the other custom designs that you can put to him, which sucks. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't really add anything to the game. Adding Arnold to the game besides some story, because if you if you get the game, you get some tapes, and like if you level up, you get some tapes of Arnold's character speaking, and that's basically it. You get the skin and those tapes. Um, but I mean, it's cool to see Arnold. Maybe maybe it's an, um, leading to him to come back to another Predator movie. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, I mean. The, pro- the game is all right. It's not a lot. There's not a lot of content. It's just one mode, one map, one concept. So, but yeah, that's basically everything. The ro- yeah, just one, literally one map. But that's, you know, how much more is the game? Like twenty bucks? Forty. Oh my gosh, forty bucks for that game. Yeah, it should be at least twenty. Um, but you know, what's cool? It's made by the people that made um, Friday the Thirteenth, the game, which I also have. With it, with that game priced now, I think it's twenty, which it should be. The Predator should be twenty, but they wanted to make a little bit more money. But not a lot of people are buying it. Not a lot of people are pro- playing it. It's not enough content. They thought that if you, they thought adding um, Arnold to the game would get more people. But it's really you should have made Arnold free or already had him the game to get more people. And just add a little bit more game modes. Add a story. There should have been a story for this game. And it would have made it more interesting. It's like Battlefront 2 all over again. <laughs> it basically is. It's like, no, it's Battlefront. No, see, this one right now is Battlefront 1. Next, it's going to come out with the second one. It's going to be like Battlefront 2. Uh, but yeah, that's basically... Oh well. Yeah, it's basically what we wanted to talk about. We talked about a lot of stuff. I don't know if we've been recording for an hour. It doesn't really tell me. Um, but what time did we start? Like ten nineteen. So, so yeah, it's been like forty minutes or so. Um, but you know, it's been it's been a good talk. I mean, a lot of stuff. Not a lot of stuff has came out this week. So it's good good thing that we got to dive into a lot of stuff that we really wanted to talk to this episode was supposed to be out earlier but then we had technical technical 
technical difficulties. Um, so, I mean, thank you, Evan, for joining me on this one. I'm so excited uh, for you to come on. Um, this was a lot of fun. I hopefully that he can come on for more um, episodes in the future, even for the review show, just normal reviews or just you know anything new that comes along. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, especially um, like I said before, go check out my review show. Um, if you guys have not uh, checked that out uh, from Spotify, if you guys want to check out my Spotify from the review show, go check that out. Um, the Big Talk with Austin. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun next week. Um, I don't know what's coming up, but I did definitely want this episode to come up on Monday. But, you know, you know. Uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. Anyway, guys, thank you guys very much for being here. Um, like always, we'll see you in the next podcast. Bye, guys.